You may remember when you went to Paris years ago that everybody there smokes very strong cigarettes with names like Gitan or Gauloise, right? At that time, it's not anymore, but at that time, those were government businesses. The government, the gov because tobacco had to be taxed and tobacco had a certain sinfulness attached to it, like alcohol, that the government insisted we are gonna run produce. Okay, so the French government produced all those cigarettes. To this day in France, the railways are all nationalized. So the SNCF, which is the railroad of France, is a government operation. So um, it used to be that oil and gas and telephone and airline were, you know, Air France, that was a government operation. Now, because of the power of the United States, in the second half of the 20th century, a number of those socialist uh, ownerships have been privatized, have been sold back into the private sector. So Air France is once again a private company. And I think the uh, EDF that's called Electricité de France, their, their utility there is now once again private. Uh, but then that's the part of socialism in France that was undone. But there were other parts of socialism that were not. For example, just to give you an idea, if you have a baby in France, the government assigns you a social worker. You don't have to accept them if you don't want them, but you get one automatically. And the cost is uh, nothing. And that person is there to help you, I think the first six months and you can ask them to do anything, change the baby, pay the baby, go out shopping. It, the assumption is you need help as a new parent, you know, to get used to all of that. So you get this. National health, the, the higher education. Um, bread is subsidized in France. Um, the socialists pushed all that stuff through. Uh, here's one that Americans always look at me and they get that sad look in their face like the puppy who hasn't gotten his bone to chew. I say to them, in France, it's the law. The minute you graduate from high school or college, you take your first job. Your employer has to give you five weeks paid vacation every year. That, you don't have to bargain for it, go on strike for it, ask for it. No, no, it's automatic, automatic because it's part of a decent life that you have time off without having to worry about the money. Americans look at me as if I have described to them some magical place way up in the sky in heaven that some nasty person invented just to make them feel bad that they don't have anything like it. I tell them most Americans don't get five weeks paid vacation after 20 years on the job. I mean, it's just, Socialists did that. And so popular is it that no conservative government, and there have been many, would dare touch it because they'd be voted out of office in 10, maybe 12 minutes. It's like the first demonstration I ever went on in France. I mean, I speak French, I go there all the time. We were coming out, my wife and I coming out of the hotel, and there's a demonstration. And the first thing we see is a group of women carrying, coming in the red flag with hammer and sickle. Very clear, who oh, they are, they're coming in. Women, they're marching. And we asked them in French, what are you marching for? They care. The government just proposed to privatize daycare. That was not what caught my attention. Because right behind them, right behind them in the demonstration, were six nuns, Catholic nuns, carrying the banner of St. Peter, whatever the hell the church was that they came from. And they were chatting, they all knew each other, they all come from the same, the, the districts of Paris are called arrondissements, um, regions. And they were all from the same region. They all knew each other. They would joke and having a wonderful time. It was too much for an American. Communists 
and nuns having a good time. They all knew each other. What? And the answer is, where did the government locate the daycare centers? In the basements of the churches. France is a Catholic country, so the, most of the churches are Catholic churches. So the Catholic church was getting money from the government to pay for giving the basement to the little kiddies so they could play, and the nuns or whoever they hired would supervise them. The communists wanted it because it's a, the working class wants to have daycare without paying for it. The church wants the rent. So they, they were working together. You know, it's just, it's just a different way of... That exists all to this day, free daycare and everything. My, when I taught there, I knew a professor who brought me there. He had a seven-year-old uh, daughter. Every morning at seven, he, he and his wife both had jobs. He was a professor, she was a psychiatrist. Every morning at seven o'clock, they brought Sandrine, was her name, typical French girl's name. They brought Sandrine to the public daycare center in the neighborhood they lived. She could stay there until seven o'clock at night, 12 hours. She had her own little outfit, which I saw. They would give her breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it cost $14 a week. You could come if you didn't want the whole day, if you had time off, you want to be with your kid, but pick them up after two hours, pick them up for lunch. All of that no problem. had to be done in advance, but as long as they had a schedule, everything. You know. And I, he would explain to me, he said, you live a completely different life from me. He said, I don't, you worry about having enough money to put your kid to college. I don't. You worry about having your, your toddler in the daycare center. I don't. These are two enormous expenses, and I have health insurance. You don't. And I, he does pay for that. I mean, he pays for the child care too, but it's ridiculous. It's subsidized. And they have, in every school has to be a nurse and all of that. And you should see the way they're French. So they eat. You know, Americans would be jealous. The children, 14 and up, get a little glass of wine. <laughs> anyway, so the communists and the socialists differed over that.